Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for another live cast this week. I've been uh, really enjoying these live casts, uh, bringing it uh, to an option here on the platform of Facebook uh, to be easy for you guys to watch uh, and learn with us as we prepare for a new future of work and something that I've been working on for almost seven years now, <laughs> really equipping people with the skills and the knowledge and the education to work independently. And now it's like the whole world has joined us on this new mission. So I'm really happy to guys to have you here. Um, and today we are going to be jamming all about how to leverage LinkedIn uh, to get clients and most importantly, to build meaningful relationships. Now, that is the biggest piece that I think we're going to talk about today is not to use LinkedIn as a sleazy way to connect or a sleazy way to build relationships, but really build genuine, authentic partnerships, collaborators, uh, and clients, which is what we want in this day of the online world. We're bombarded by all sorts of spammy things, and we don't want to be a part of that. I hope not that if you're here. Uh, so we want to do this well, and we want to do this in a way that uh, creates the, the, the personalized, more human touch to the way that we connect uh, these days virtually. Um, so joining me today uh, is my good friend and ex-client, and also I've been a client of her, so we've had quite a number of uh, interactions in the past four years. We've known each other. Uh, Marilyn Wo uh, is who you see on screen right now. Uh, so Marilyn, say hello. You're from Singapore right now. We're, we're, we're in the same time zone, Bali and Singapore. Yeah, yeah. Yep, and sunny as same, yeah. Bright and sunny. Bright and sunny. Hello, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> thank so, you for having me, Lydia. Yes, and thank you for coming yep. here to have this uh, really meaningful conversation with me. I know that uh, you know a lot of what we do in these live learnings is curated by my community, right? I asked a question of what do you want to learn? What's going to help you really move forward with uh, your work and your career and your business right now? And LinkedIn was sort of one of the topics that uh, people have been confused about and going, I kind of need to get back there and I need to kind of beef up my profile again because I can no longer get out there and meet people in real life, right? Conferences have been canceled, uh, events have been canceled. How now do I do this? And all of a sudden they remember LinkedIn, right? So, sort of like what I did six months ago and go, is this a place that I could be meeting people since I'm traveling so much? So uh, I've definitely learned a lot in the last six months getting back to LinkedIn. And Marilyn, you have been, I think, back in the game with LinkedIn for uh, the last year. Uh, before we go into what your experience has been like, um, I want to just tell people a little bit about what you do uh, and then introduce myself as well, just in case people are watching this for the first time. Uh, so for everyone that who may not know who I am, uh, my name is Lydia Lee. I'm the founder of Screw the Cubicle. Uh, I'm a small business strategist and a work reinvention coach. So primarily what I do is really help uh, corporate professionals repurpose and transition their expertise and their skills into an online business. And I also help small businesses to grow uh, and thrive in their business as well by being more of themselves, by utilizing more of their genius zone so that you're really actually building a business you want to keep, <laughs> not a business that feels like a job. Uh, and so uh, that has been really my biggest mission to help people find great work, uh, launch great ideas that will change the world uh, and really do it in a way that feels right for you. Uh, now, Marilyn and I worked together. Uh, she was my coaching client a couple years ago or four years ago now uh, when she was a freelancer for 10 years, uh, but looking to scale her business. She's a mom of two kids now. Uh, she was feeling like, damn, 10 years later, I still feel like I made myself a, what she called a self-made prison where she was working crazy hours and not enjoying the fruits of her labor. Uh, and since then, uh, Marilyn has built an amazing digital uh, design agency. Uh, she primarily focuses, and I've worked with her, I've hired her as well myself. If you like my brand and my website, guess who's responsible for that? Marilyn Wo. She's the one that created my logo, my website, all the basically graphic assets that you see, all the pineapples that you see all over my brand it has been Marilyn's uh, great brain and her great ideas. Uh, but Marilyn has such a special place for, for, for help, helping um, solopreneurs, small businesses that are really doing big things in the world, but don't have the team members and the full time or full time revenue, right? That, that can hire a full time team, right? Or the kind of money that you would usually spend to hire a full time team, but they want to have great assets 
and the brands to make sure that their their work is found out there. Uh, so Marilyn offers this really, uh, I've been a part of this as well, uh, offering monthly uh, unlimited uh, graphic design packages that are really affordable for business owners to use. Uh, she's also a web designer and a, gra and a brand uh, artist as well. So anytime you need a revamp on your site, anytime that you need a fresh look in your brand, uh, Marilyn really is your gal. Now, Marilyn, why do you tell people why you do what you do and what you're most passionate about in your work right now? Well, um, yes, as you said, I've been a freelancer for 10 years. So it means I've been sort of working from home, working from anywhere for a long time. So uh, with that, it has been great. I really, it's not like working from home, but it's like um, you can literally work from anywhere. You can save travel time, you can save travel costs, you can, you know, it's flexibility, it's freedom, it's, it's choice of your own schedule. So that is what I love about what I'm doing. And with that, I would also want to help people to also have that kind of freedom the kind of flexibility, the kind of schedule where they can say, I need to pick my kids. Can I do it now? You know, that kind of thing, which I am able to do, do so. Mm. So this is something that I want people to also enjoy and work at the same time, which I'm trying to use graphic design as that base because that's where I, I have been at for, for a while, right? So I'm using that to create this business where I can hire as many people as I can. And when I have people, they are actually working remotely. Yeah. So yeah. they are kind of in-house, but remote. And they can work from anywhere, right? They don't have to come to Singapore. They don't have to be in an office. But yeah, so we have that kind of system, the kind of process where they can work from home, work from anywhere. They can be with their kids. Yeah, the kind of flexible schedule, yeah, as much as possible. Yeah, so that is actually my mission and vision. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm glad you're doing that because obviously that really helps you to hire people that can uh, also work from home and be a mom, right? And and do the things yeah. that we all have to do. Uh, so let's get let's jump right into LinkedIn because I know that's what people are here uh, to to learn, uh, and that's a good background of sort of why we, you know, as busy entrepreneurs, as busy parents, right? We want to be able to use simple strategies to be able to grow a business without spending oodles of hours on it. And LinkedIn has been uh, a really great marketing platform uh, for people to really not only gain uh, uh, credibility for their work, but really to connect with clients they may have never connected with before. Uh, and I think you've been using it a lot to build influence and a reputation for yourself. Now, before we jump into what you've been doing, uh, I want to kind of start with talking about uh, when you start to use LinkedIn is a really important uh, question to ask yourself is what is your uh, what is your intention to use a platform like LinkedIn, right? Before we start to make work for ourselves and get right into it, uh, we need to really think about what I want to use LinkedIn for, right? What's the true purpose and intention for me to do this? Because when you know what that intention is, that's actually going to act like a GPS for you in terms of how you design your profile, in terms of who you connect with, right, on LinkedIn. Uh, it, it will, it will um, make your decisions on what it is that you feature, right? And, and make sure that people see on your LinkedIn profile. Uh, so if you are a speaker looking for speaking gigs, if you are a book author looking for uh, podcast interviews, right? Or you are a graphic designer looking for new clients, right? Or for me, I'm using it a lot to partner up with businesses that are like-minded like mine, because collaboration and partnerships are one of my biggest goals for 2020 this year. So that has been my main motivation um, to get on LinkedIn. So we want to be able to uh, start with that key question of intention and purpose so that we can make sure that our activities that we spend doing on LinkedIn uh, is going to be fruitful for us, right? Now, Marilyn, what has been your intention uh, when you started to, to play with LinkedIn uh, 12 months ago? Okay, so the main intention actually went way back from 12 months ago. Uh, but at the point in 12 months ago, I wanted to actually, business-wise, I wanted to um, kind of really get in contact with my target audience. That's the business side of things, right? Because my target audience were more like marketing people, CMOs, marketing directors, head of marketing. So in that sense, of course, I'll head to LinkedIn, right? So that is the later part of where I was 12 months uh, back. Um, so that is 
the targeting part, the businessy side of things. But way before that, I I was just trying to find clients and I was just not knowing where I was, didn't know what I was doing. I go on Facebook, I look for people and I just work with anyone, right? So that, that's, that was the start. Then later on, I started writing, writing a lot on Medium. And as I, as I, as I wrote, I got a lot of um, people coming to me and talking about my, my posts, reading my, my articles. And I mean, before that, I wasn't like a writer or anything. So I didn't really think that I can write. I didn't really think that people want to read. But with these people coming to my, my articles and reading them, that's when I got the confidence that, you know, there are people who are looking for information of anything, certain things, right? But what I wrote about is more of uh, my journey uh, through the 10 years of being a freelancer and how I sort of transited to being more like less of a freelancer and more towards being an entrepreneur, right? That kind of thing. So with that, that with that journey, a lot of people, I, I just realized you know, from there that a lot of people are trying to figure that path out as well. Mm. Yeah, so in that sense, that's when I started to uh, go deeper into medium, getting to know more writers. And I figured that they try to market the articles from with social media platforms, be it Facebook, be it Instagram, and also LinkedIn. They do on LinkedIn. And that's when I go on to LinkedIn and just look at their stuff and see how they are doing it and how they are marketing it and how they are getting engagements and all that. And that's when I thought, hey, I think this is a platform I should start because it's not as noisy. It's not as crowded. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's somewhere where I can um, kind of, uh, it's like, you know, I read from somewhere, it's like uh, there's a platform where there's no, there's no crowd yet, there's no noise yet. It's, it's like you can sort of ride that wave to, to, to hit those, you know, that, that wave coming in and, and, and go along with that wave. Rather than, you know, try to go onto Facebook and add to the noise and, yeah. you know, go with the crowd. Yeah, which you can't be really noticed. You see, you see how it goes, right? So everybody has that, those quality that they have. But, you know, I was just looking for that place where I can, I definitely want to get noticed, right? So I, I, I went to LinkedIn to start. Yeah. So that was that. That, that point at, on that 12 month. Yeah, I yeah. remember your Medium post. So for any of you guys that don't know what Medium is, Medium is, is, is owned by Twitter. Uh, it's a huge database of uh, articles. And basically, if you don't have time for your own blog, uh, it's an amazing uh, platform that gets you to millions of viewers if you're writing on Medium. Uh, and it is so easy to write on Medium. Like there's, you don't need to be techy. It's super clean. It's all formatted right for you. Uh, Marilyn has wrote a little bit about my business as well in some of her articles. I've gotten tons of traffic from her articles to my website, which is such a thank you, Marilyn, for that. Uh, but it's, it was such a powerful tool for you to start writing again and, and get feedback and validation that your thoughts matter, your story matters, and your experience have been really helpful for people, right? And 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 that's what sort of helped you to get started in writing. Uh, and that I think really supported you in writing a really great post for LinkedIn. Now, one of the interesting stats that I, I was, when I was researching back about LinkedIn six months ago, you know, what I found out was that only 16% of people actually use LinkedIn for a job search, right? Everyone thinks of LinkedIn as a place to get a job, right? A place to connect with recruiters and get jobs, right? And the rest of the people out of the 16%, right? Out, apart from the 16%, 84% of people are actually using it for business. So if you're just posting your CV, you're just posting your, your, your work experience only, on LinkedIn and hoping and crossing your fingers that someone's going to find you, uh, that's not using LinkedIn to its fullest capability, right? So um, you want to resonate with an audience that you really want to have for your business and that you want to connect with. And using LinkedIn differently is going to allow you to do that rather than just posting uh, or sorry, uh, uh, having your profile found once and then not actually engaging in LinkedIn appropriately. Now, what I want to ask you, Marilyn, is because one of the things that I've seen you do really well in, I've been following you for quite a while, and I've seen so much of your engagement skyrocket, you know, from the roof. Once you started, I can see the consistency in how you post. And part of my question was like, what the hell does a mother of two right now with a full-time agency find time to post 
so much, right? So I had to ask you that question when I got on a call with you to come on the show uh, is how do we do this? How do we, you know, we know we need to post, we know that we need to engage on LinkedIn uh, and create valuable content, right? That's a very important piece is that people keep you on top of mind, right? They understand you are an influencer in your industry. They know that you have credibility, not just by reading your profile, by, but by consuming the valuable information that you're providing on a weekly level to really support people to do things that they couldn't have done before without you. So your posts, Marilyn, have amazing metrics, right? You get like 200 plus over uh, views and comments on your, uh, more views actually than that, but just the people that like the post is about 200 people. But the bigger statistic that I like looking at is the engagement statistic. How many people are commenting and giving you feedback and talk to you and having conversations with you in your post, which is 200 comments plus sometimes. It's amazing, right? Like, and it's consistent like that. Um, how did you manage to build a habit and a practice in knowing what to post, right, first of all, and finding the time to post on your LinkedIn to, to create th that sort of engagement? Yeah, first of all, I, I had a lot of, trouble finding that time I mean 12 months back it was crazy it's um it was inconsistent I had I definitely had no time and I, I set my own time I was like okay maybe I I can just wake up at 5 a.m just take 15 minutes write it out and that's it right I mean it's that easy, easy, as, easy as that <laughs> sounds easy. yeah exactly right it sounds easy and I can actually tell people right now that oh you just have to wake up early in the morning and just just pose right um well the the difficult thing is in the mind a lot uh, I I was just afraid of what I write. It's not something that people want to read, and you know it's like you you feel like you you'll be judged, you know, and you you are afraid of the criticisms when they comment. That was what I was feeling, and and what I was focusing was on that only. So that that's why it was difficult. That's that's why it was a dread to get up to just write it down and post. So it didn't just um, disappear overnight. Um, it's okay. So before that, I was writing medium on medium, right? I have all those long articles. It's like seven minutes, 10 minutes, uh, to read. I broke them down. That was what I started with. I broke them down to little bite size, uh, so that they can be placed into the LinkedIn post because LinkedIn has this uh, limit. You can't post beyond certain number of uh, words or something like that. So you can't write like super long article on, right. on a post. Yeah, so I can't just copy and paste. I, I can't copy and paste as well, even if I broke up, because there was there's no context, right? But but what I did was I just broke them down first, and then every post, every broken down uh, post or section, I will just re kind of readjust and and figure a way to fit into the LinkedIn post. Mm. That is that is one one part of it, and the other part is to lead them to something. So I I had to kind of. It's kind of a strategizing kind of a way to 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 you know uh, know what to post every day or every week. So at that time, uh, twelve months back, I posted maybe like once a week. Then after that, twice a week, and then three times a week. But it was random, right? It wasn't so so structured and so sequential. It was just like uh, whenever I want. But it doesn't it doesn't really help because whenever I want, then it doesn't give me that habit, right? Yeah. So I had to set myself up or set my kind of environment for success, uh -huh. basically. Yeah, so the starting is a lot of effort to say, okay, this timing, I wake up, I do this, sit down, get it out, yeah, post it out, things like that. Then later on, it becomes easier. It does become easier. Yeah, it's like yeah. building a bit of a muscle, isn't it? It's like when we go to the yes. gym, we don't want to go the first month. It's like for yeah. it takes forever for us to go. We have to put our clothes by the door. we got to get an accountability buddy with us, right? Like it, it takes more force to get out there. Uh, and whatever systems, like, you know, as you said, like for me, it's, it's posting uh, same time, same day every week because that creates like a space and a container. So it's not whenever I feel like it is I sit down for 30 minutes and I, I, I do a couple things in order to be able to post. Now, I love your idea of the micro post, right? When people uh, talk about, um, you know, the the um, the when they when they when you look at it, you're already doing the effort right to um, write a long blog post. So for example, for me, I do a video blog a week and you might do one blog a week. And if you already have such a great um, piece of content, 
there's a lot of micro posts and, and value in ensuring that you're using the information in breakdown, right, bite-sized ways, as you said, to be able to create new micro posts on LinkedIn. You know, and that is actually something that I have done previously is when I do have a webinar or I do have a, a video blog that I've created, I do actually take little snippets because it's people consume things in smaller pieces anyway. Right. Uh, and that, I think, is an important piece to know that you don't want to bombard people with too much information on each post, but to give them just little seed planting information. Right. Uh, you can link to the bigger article on Medium or your blog if you want to. Right. You can yep. just talk about one tiny topic and create a conversation around it, you know, uh, and, and, and sharing your experience, uh, I think, is a really important piece to do. Now, has these micro posts been kind of your main star of the show when it comes to building new connections, clients inquiring about your services? Like what has been sort of the um, the results of having these micro posts more often on LinkedIn? So I guess it depends on what your micro post talks about. Uh, for, for, for me, my micro post talks talk, talk a lot about my experiences when I was transiting. So it's all the struggles, right? And, and how hard it is when you have no money and things like that. And when client comes, I have to take care of my kid. I can't be at two places at one time. So all these come into the stories. Uh, with that, I actually receive private messages or direct messages from people who resonate, right? They, they relate to it because they are also struggling with that similar, not, not exactly the same, but similar uh, kind of uh, challenges, right? Like they can't be at two places at one time and they are trying to figure a way out of that. Uh, and they are really struggling really badly, I mean, according to how they are telling me. So from there, then that's when we strike a conversation. And yeah, then that's how we get to know each other better. So there will be always a flow in that direct message, um, messages with them rather than just straight up, um, oh, I do design. Right. It, that, that's, yeah, that's out of like so random, right? I mean, you want to have some form of uh, similar interest or common ground to start from, you see. So these polls actually help with that when, yeah. when they feed them, yeah. It's almost kind of like a conversation starter. You can think about these yeah. micro posts as a conversation starter. Uh, and you don't want to go straight for the jugular, right? Like th we don't yeah. network that way anyway in real life. I hope you don't because no one's going to talk to you. If you get to a party or a conference and immediately you're like, hi, how are you? This is what I do. Here's my business card. Can you hire me? Yeah. Nobody wants to network that way. It's about building relationships, just like you would do at a dinner party. You would say hello to somebody. You would find out a bit about what they do. You would talk about uh, something that interests them or have a common interest you both share. And in a lot of ways, when people comment and give you feedback on your Posts, they're already telling you they have common interest in some capacity with you, right? And I love that you kind of take that offline or off the post and actually directly message them and go, hey, you know, love what you said there and talk a bit more about them and, 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 and about, you know, what it is that you guys resonated with together. Uh, one of the strategies that I've been using um, that because I'm a video girl, I don't like to type. I don't like to write long things. I am more of a video person. And so what I've done and I've shared this tool before with a lot of people watching my other uh, live casts uh, is that I use a tool called Loom uh, to record very short uh, video messages for the people that I really want to connect with or that have given me lots of engagement on certain posts and say hello to them with a personal video. I can tell you this really has brought so many new friendships and, and, and people to me because that personal touch, that human touch, I think people want to know that you're a person behind the business. And if you took just a minute to give them a quick message like you do, Marilyn, or a quick video like I do on a, on a private message, you can absolutely be able to um, just have a lot more of, of um, a personal approach, right? Which I think is helps you to stand out a little bit more on LinkedIn. Yeah, it, it does. Uh, I, I guess the difficulty the difficulty is um, for myself, it's, for example, like video. I, I just can't do video, for example, or, or I'm, I don't feel that I'm good on video. I don't want to do it. And that's what most people may think or some people may think. And... Um, the, the thing is, it's not so much of what we are looking at or what we see. It's how the other person is, is looking at. So 
I mean, if you are, you just, you're just yourself, you just say what you think and help that person, that is good enough. You see, it's just simple as that. And for myself, um, I do, tr I have tried videos as well, uh, not in the same way as what you do, more of the talking about the tacky stuff when people approach me. So when they ask me about, you know, I want to kind of redo my web website, um, but, you know, I'm not sure where to start, things like that, right? Yeah. For example. Yeah. Yeah. I will run run through and do a walk down of Love the that. website. Yeah, and that is a video. So that is also a video, right? But what they are looking at is how I can help their website mm. knowing how I am as a person. You see, without me really just telling them and talking to them, but That's right. more, yeah, what I understand about their design, their web design and all that. So actually that helped quite a bit. I, I have um, tried a few times and I did uh, get a lot of working... Um, uh, sort of connections from there. So it, it, it does help. Yeah. Yeah. I think the walkthrough is such a brilliant idea, especially if you're someone that um, has a visual way of explaining uh, or actually solve a problem, right? That, that's the one thing that I always say about when you're engaging uh, about sales, right? Is not to go, here's what I can do for you and you should believe me. Right. The most important part is to prove yourself, right? To actually say, Hey, I'm, I'm genuinely curious about your problem. Right. And I want to help you right now with a five minutes of my time. And you can consider this a little bit like a, 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 a case study, right, for yourself as well. But it's an opportunity for you to showcase your work, not just to tell people what you do, but to show the value of what you do. And I love that idea, Marilyn, that you mentioned about what well, I think you called it like a website uh, breakdown or something before or one of our mutual friends, Danny, calls it a, a website breakdown where you literally you can use again Loom for that as a, as a tool. You can use screencast.com. Um, you can actually, so if you're a designer, you are someone that wants to give feedback on someone's copywriting, right? Or someone's like, I'm struggling a little bit with my about page or, you know, my website doesn't have the right flow uh, for my client experience. Well, take a look at their website. You're already, you know, the wheels are already churning on what it is that you know they can do better at. Why not record your thoughts, right? And share your voice and walk them through quick wins that they could be doing right now in order to make that effective. And when you can prove yourself with a quick win, right? Using that kind of strategy and sending that to them, that's going to open the channel for people to go, wow, if, you know, thank you for that. And, and may it be possible that we can talk further, right? Into a deeper relation, working relationship uh, uh, as well. And you can invite them to that, right? You can say, hey, that, that was a great strategy for you. Would you need someone to help you actually do the full shebang? I'm happy to kind of talk to you a little deeper about what you need and how I can help. Yeah, exactly. I love the way you say quick wins because uh, what I understand, even there are people who are, you know, trying to sell me stuff, right? That's fine, but they they kind of uh, put in too much. So there is a lot of overwhelm for, for the for the person receiving it. Uh, you know, things like big features and, 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 and functions of what they're selling, but I can't piece together what it can do for me, although it can be helpful, you know what I'm saying? So it's a legit business, but if you give just one piece of it and uh, talk about it to, in a way to link up to what I need at that point in time, then there will be that connection, definitely. There will be a yeah, way to, yeah. to talk more about it, yeah. I think people, when we look for a professional to help us with something, we usually have one very primary, urgent problem to solve, yeah. right? We, it's, not, it's not enough to say, I can help you create a thriving business. Like, where in the area are you going to help me? And you may not know what that area is unless you ask that person what it is specifically that's been keeping them up at night, right? So if, and if they have a website problem, again, what about that website problem is going to be the case? And so when you ask them that problem, they tell you specifically, it's, you know, people are just signing up for my stuff or people are not going to my service page. I wonder if they can find it, you know, whatever that might be, then you can really uh, tailor your specific advice right, via the private messaging app uh, to give them a real walkthrough and, and answer a specific question that might remove the barrier for them and then open the door, right, for that meaningful conversation. Uh, I really love that. Uh, I'm just going to share very quickly um, on screen uh, some of the micro posts that just examples of some micro posts that you've done, Marilyn, just so that people get a few ideas and why I think they've been really um, uh, valuable to people. Um, so this is an example of one that Marilyn did, uh, which is seven tips on how to d design engaging social media images. Right now, this, um, you know, it, it's a really great post for her because 
that's what she does, right? Is design engaging social media images. So these tips, again, positions her as someone that is gonna give you the lowdown on what it is you have to think about and how to just get effective. If you are designing images yourself or you're making sure that whoever you're working with are designing images in these checklist items. Now you can't see the rest of the checklist because obviously it's just a quick screenshot, but that's a really good example of um, showcasing what you do and your knowledge and your expertise by giving people something valuable they can take away uh, in a micro post. Uh, this second example is, you know, uh, top six things to look for in a graphic designer. Again, a really great gateway question, right? When people are, um, when, you, when you think about people's resistance in hiring another professional, there could be particular questions like this one. What am I looking for anyway? What should I be, what are the terms that I should be looking for? Uh, and what kind of designer do I need? Right. And if she can answer those questions for people, again, they're going to be able to trust her a little bit more. Right. As a designer. Uh, and she's giving people a really good tip about how to remove the barrier of hire, hiring a designer by giving them these powerful questions to ask first before you spend money on a designer. Um, this is a more of a thought leadership post. Uh, what's the number one most important mindset of being an entrepreneur? Right. This uh, Marilyn I, tends to show a lot of behind the scenes about what it feels like to be a mom to what it feels like to sometimes lose your shit when your kids are running around right now right in quarantine that we're doing right now uh and what's going on and she's not afraid to kind of share like this is a, a screenshot of a, a a video she shared of her voice getting a bit rambunctious uh and how her schedule has been wrecked apart by these kids right now uh and that can again really help other parents are like, all right, we don't, you know, let's be honest about this stuff, right? Let's talk about what uh, what we've been doing to be able to maintain sanity and productivity while being parents. Um, and and you know, I think that's really been, I think, builds that kind of human touch to your post rather than a how to do that and how to do this and only be a guru uh, and someone that knows it all. You're kind of showing a bit of vulnerability, right, and realness to to your life. Yes, uh, I I think there are a lot of people who. Uh, brag about what they win, which is fine. There are people who do that, and they have clients from there. That that's, I mean, I'm just learning at what people do, and this is one thing that they use like a, as a tactic. Uh, that that the problem with that for me is, uh, I can't really be myself. It's, I mean, I I I can easily brag about what I have done, right? Like there are also people who probably earn millions and they can talk about they are earning millions and then they talk about it on LinkedIn. And that's where people connect and they say, oh, wow, that's great. And then they'll congratulate that person and there'll be a lot of uh, sort of engagement on, on mm -hmm. that kind of post. Mm -hmm. But there are also the other side where people want to see how do you get past that failure? You know, there are a lot of people who are going mm. through these struggles. So how do you... It's not how you earn the million, but it's how you, you know, even get past that first step to maybe even earning that one dollar, something like that. Yeah. That is what people want to hear. I mean, you, you can brag about that, but you have to come back to this part, right, on, on, on what you have done yourself. Not how to get there yet, but how do you get past yes. a certain stage. Yeah, that yeah. is such a good point. So this point. is what I'm looking at. Yeah, and I think, yeah. you know, a lot of times when we look at success stories, then, you know, for people, it goes from zero to 100 really quickly. It's like, I was living in poverty, and then I was a millionaire, right? There wasn't this middle, truthful part of what they did to get there. And I think people resonate with the struggle, and people resonate with that, hey, you know, I've been where you are, and I know what you're going through. I think it's really ensuring that your posts and your story and your exper uh, your your content really resonates with where people are at. And yep. sometimes yep. they can't see the success as as quickly as you do because they're they're at point zero, right? So really understanding your audience, understanding what struggles they currently have, even if you don't have them, but had them once in, in, a li in your life, uh, that is more of the effective um, content, I think, that's, that's better to share than just what's working for you now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, you, I mean, you can just share, uh, share a series, but, but you've got to kind of do it in a, because you're helping, right? You're not just trying to brag. You're, you're really genuinely helping and showing them that that's the human side of you and, and everybody is human, right? Everybody is not kind of immune to crisis or anything. So you kind of give them that real thing and then that's when they'll connect with you. I mean, that's what we are trying to do, right? We are trying to create co meaningful connections. 
So that is the, the way to, to get to know them when we, we don't know them at all, starting as, a, as strangers, right? Yeah. So that's where the, the, the point, yeah, the point comes in. Yeah, yeah really, really good. And by the way, uh, if, when you, if you guys are listening on the replay or the live stream, uh, you guys can get a handy checklist. There's a link above this video uh, that when you um, register, I will send you uh, the, 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 the checklist of what you need to do to prepare your profile, which is where I'm going to get into right now as a walkthrough, as a screencast right now. Um, it's also going to summarize for you some of the most uh, powerful strategies that Marilyn and I have both, uh, that's what's worked for us, right? Is again, you need to try it out to see if it works for you because there's no uh, one step blueprint to get this done, okay? And so what we're sharing is what's worked for us, but I want you to be able to test it and explore and experiment with some of these strategies and just see what lands for you. What's that's the most important part is doing something that feels right for you. Marilyn and I are not right every single time. We're doing what's right for us. And so you need to take control and autonomy over the way that you will use these strategies, but you will be able to get that in a handy uh, document so that you can start to really build engagement and start really using LinkedIn effectively. Okay. Um, now, I know that one of the big questions that people have had is about how do I get started in making sure my, my LinkedIn profile is found? Now, that's going to be important because, you know, that's going to help uh, the engine of LinkedIn to bring in more uh, leads or more clients or more partners and collaborators to your profile. Um, I'm going to share a screen share right now just to walk you through very quickly my own profile and just give you components so you can visually see uh, what I'm talking about and what are areas to start with. And again, this will be in the checklist that I'll be sending you so you don't have to memorize everything right now. You can go back to the video later as well uh, to go through it. But um, let me just walk you through this and then we can uh, really see what I'm talking about here. All right, screen share. Hopefully everyone can see my screen at the moment. All right, so right here, you'll see my profile here. And the, what you wanna be able to do in this top part of your profile to start is make sure that you have a, a very good profile photo. I can't tell you how many people that I've seen in LinkedIn that put like a lifestyle shot of them jumping at a beach somewhere, you know, or something that's a long shot that you can barely see their face. Uh, anything that's more of a headshot, that's professional, uh, this is, you know, where uh, you want to be putting it. And that's going to create uh, more engagement on your profile because people can actually see your face uh, and it's going to look polished and professional. You want to consider also putting in a banner image. Uh, mine, you can see up top here, uh, that is a tagline uh, that I use for my business. Now you can put in here something that, you know, I help X do Y so that they can do, you know, zero, right? Whatever it is that you want to say on there. Uh, and you can make sure that you are drawing attention to what you are doing, what, uh, you, what you offer, right? Who you are, that's right on the banner piece there. Now, as you can see from underneath my name, there is a very short uh, descriptor headline here uh, that you can do several ways. Now, Marilyn, I know that you do yours more uh, as a sentence, right? Mine uh, is a little bit of certain keywords that I want to be found for uh, and a descriptor of what I do and for whom. Uh, you only have 120 characters in this area here, so you want to use that wisely. And again, you can test out several ways of uh, using this headline area, uh, but just write something on here and make sure that you're using words that people might be finding or searching for so that they can come onto your profile and your profile is a lot more searchable. And then next down here is your, um, your summary and really your story, your about story. Uh, now I'm, this is one of my drafts. I'm looking to do even uh, more with this. And I think it's kind of a working draft at times uh, in order for us to get this kind of polished for all of us. Uh, but here's where you can tell a little bit about your story, about the work that you do. And it's very important to not just talk about your job titles and talk about, uh, you know, a very vague version of what you do, but really talk about, you know, how you get people to results, how you do what you do, why you do what you do, um, you know, what's the value and the philosophy and some concepts of your work that's going to attract more eyeballs to read further. Now, one of the tips that I give people is to add a call to action in their story piece here, because if people are interested in what you do, you want to give them an easy way to find your website to find uh, your discovery call link, right? Uh, your resources that you want people to start with. So I've added, for example, uh, an, a, a call with me as well as a start here resource page. Uh, and then I've also added specialties. Uh, now this is again, 
helping LinkedIn to find the right words or, or find us with the right keywords when people are searching for these sorts of specialties that they need support in or to connect with people that can help them with those areas of work. Now, you can put your credibility on there, right, where your featured publications have been. Uh, and there's also an area underneath this of where, what you want to feature on your profile. So if you remember from the beginning of our conversation today, I talked about uh, making sure that you set an intention. What do you want this uh, to use LinkedIn for? Right. And and this is the area that you're going to make sure. So if you want to be someone that is uh, positioned as an influencer in your space or if you want to be a public speaker and to get more speaking gigs where you might what you might feature here as a, as someone who needs more speaking gigs is your speakers reel. Right. Your examples and videos of speaking gigs you've done maybe interviews uh, that you've done that can, again, showcase what you do and get you ready for hire. So you might position what you feature here based on, again, your goals that you might have for your audience. So for me, I feature a lot of uh, big publications that I've been a part of in Forbes, having them post right anywhere that my story is being told well. Um, and because I'm looking to build these partnerships and connections and interviews that I'm looking for as well by using my LinkedIn. Now in your activities is where your, your posts are, right? This is where people will see what you've been doing. So again, if you've been posting often, you'll be able to, uh, people will be able to read your latest posts and what you care about, right? So having that consistency, even if it's just once a week, have those micro posts ready, uh, set a time for it so people can browse your profile and read some of your history of posts that you have in the past. Uh, in your experience section here, right, I'll give you a bit more tips on how to deal with this section uh, in the checklist, but here's where you can write a lot about your current experience and your past experiences. Uh, but LinkedIn makes it a very easy place for you to add attachments, right? So for example, when I talk about my role as a work reinvention strategist at Screw the Cubicle, I particularly will put articles or uh, credibility testimonials or uh, videos that I know people will, will want to consume more when it comes to this particular experience that I have, right? So this is where you could attach uh, featured publications about your work. You can attach videos that you film uh, for welcoming people to your work. You can attach, um, you know, articles on your blogs that you've written about that are really, again, specific to the work you do in this business or this particular work experience. And that's, again, going to help you do a lot more with each work experience, right? So any attachment, any extra meat that you can add to give, create more context and dynamic to this profile uh, is going to get a lot more eyeballs when people scroll through and images do really, really well. Now, let's not forget about endorsements and uh, a place to where your skills are being featured. Now, LinkedIn has a really great place for you to uh, not only endorse other people, but people to endorse your skills. So if you're great at marketing, if you're great at business strategy, you're great at copywriting, whatever it is that you do, make sure that you're reaching out to your network or your contacts or your friends that are your LinkedIn connections to go and endorse you for a specific skill. This really, again, makes your profile strong. Uh, and make sure that you're picking the skills that you want to be known for, right? Um, go in your skills, consolidate, right? Um, add, you can always press the edit button here, add a new skill, edit skills, make your primary skills a bit more featured, right? And then ensure that you're reaching out to your network to get endorsement from your past clients, from partners, from collaborators. This gives people, a, uh, you know, so that, that, that social look, right? That not just you're saying you're great, but other people can vouch. Uh, for your credibility. Recommendations are hugely powerful. Um, I try to go to my clients to ask for uh, recommendations. You can uh, give recommendation as an exchange, of course, but this allows people to say to, to, to your audience in their own words what it is that you have been working on with them and what you're great at and what they're recommending when it comes to your work. Now, um, and then when they click on these profiles, they're going to know that all these people have credibility as well, right? They're people that are movers and shakers in the industry. And it, again, allows people to build that trust right factor with you, not hearing it just from your own words, but from other people that have experience working with you. Um, and then lastly, don't forget about accomplishments. These are, you know, articles that you've been a part of. These are interviews that you might have done. These may be uh, like, you know, Marilyn, for example, had really great traction on her medium articles. This will be where you would publish your publications and uh, make sure that people know you as a thought leader 
right? People know that you have has skin in the game, right, in your industry. And if you don't have publications right now to feature, well, start writing it. We've recommended medium.com as a start for you. Uh, and that's really going to allow you, um, you know, to uh, be able to get started somewhere um, and be able to just feature some of your thoughts and your ideas immediately in your niche. Um, now, Marilyn, you know, what has been kind of some key things that you think you've tweaked in your profile to get uh, searched more easily and more visible on LinkedIn? Yeah, my headline, I would say, because for my picture, my banner photo has been there already. Uh, I guess what I've tweaked is more of the UVP because um, on my header, uh, the uh, profile cover, the picture, the banner, so-called, I have uh, embedded text inside, right? So if I want to tweak, I have to change the, the whole thing with the di different text. So I have been changing that once in a while to test out um, people I'm sort of wanting to work with and all that. So that is one that I've been tweaking quite a bit. The other one is the about section, which... I have tried to pull to sort of uh, put up a lot of what I do and what my company does and um, how we can help. Then I start to change it such that it's more of help, uh, more of the person rather than myself. So I'm actually referring to the pain first. So I, I, I go on a structure where I start with the pain. So I mention all the pain that, you know, my, the people I typically, typically work with is experiencing so when they read they're supposed to i mean i'm supposed to actually give them that feeling that they can re relate to that okay so mm. that's the pain probably agitate a bit so that's the usual way of copywriting where i give that pain the agitate and then i will come down to uh what i'm uh helping what i do to help and why they can come to me to help them to sort of solve this pain so this is the the trick that i've done uh, and then I will give a rough kind of uh, idea of what we do um, and, of course, the people I work with. So that is where the kind of uh, proof that comes in and then the call to action. So yeah. that's the structure yeah, that I have done. And, yeah, so with regards to what you have mentioned on the featured area, that is where I put my kind of um, the main post that I feel my uh, ki uh, potential clients would want to see. So if, if, if you're looking at it, it's more like uh, infographic, uh, ways to improve your infographic, your brand, things like that. And a little bit about uh, my, my, the post on what I have experienced. So these are main posts that I have already posted on LinkedIn and I want mm -hmm. to sort bring it out because these yeah, are the little more attention to it yeah to pay more attention so that is that uh featured section then um the under the experience that's where i put more of myself my more of my info and basically i put it in a way like a storytelling kind of way and more casual uh so that it's like i'm talking to a friend like i'm really just talking to you like that yeah. rather than a resume style you, 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 that's, yeah. that's the yeah that's how I, I i do that and of course my past experience just to put in you know what i really have done before and yeah and that's so skills and endorsement and recommendations i totally agree with you we have to ask uh sometimes they just write and then i will write back sometimes i'll write to them and then they will write back so it's a mutual kind of exchange yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and one of the things that I want to mention as we sort of end this live cast, and again, the checklist will be given to you if you register, so we'll, we'll summarize a lot of the strategies. Marilyn and I will talk offline after this to make sure that we're putting some of the most uh, key pieces of what we talked about today onto a document for you. Uh, and there'll be a checklist of how to get your profile ready uh, to be visible on LinkedIn. One of the caveats that I want to kind of end this live cast with is that you want to really focus again on your own goals, right? Now, one of the things I know that people struggle with sometimes is like they only look at the metrics, right? They're like, how many people liked my post? How many people only commented on my post? And for sure, there's some indicator there, right, that you are reaching people through a post. 
But I'll tell you, for me, like LinkedIn is not my primary platform. So for me, I do a lot of YouTube videos uh, and, I, and, and, I, and Facebook is uh, more of my primary social channel at the moment. But LinkedIn has been sort of the assisted um, platform that I've been using to do a different thing, which is like I said, my intention from the beginning is to align myself with better collaborators and partners where, and one of the key things I'm doing this year is being on more podcast interviews and so forth, right? So a lot of that, uh, is what I've been using LinkedIn to do. And let me tell you, most of what I do in that work is done in private messaging, right? Like there is so much more traction that I personally am getting because I'm not posting on LinkedIn as much as, for example, Marilyn is doing, right? Because I'm focusing a lot of my attention in some of my primary channels. But I use LinkedIn for the reason of connecting one-on-one -on -one with people. OK, so sometimes uh, part of it is actually reaching out personally and directly to an influencer. I enjoy. I follow them. I message them before I even add them so they know who I am and what my intentions are uh, and give them some kudos about the work that I love about what they do uh, before I even start to add them on LinkedIn. I will send them a personal message first so that they know who I am and not just the link uh, to, to add me passively. Right. So you can don't only focus on the likes and on the comments. Focus on the real human connections, and some of that can be done via the DMs or the private messaging. Uh, or if you're like Marilyn, uh, where you just want to get into the habit of sharing your voice, recognizing where you sit with your expertise, sharing what you know on a weekly basis, you know, just to not for this, not just for the reason of getting new clients, but just to get to the practice of having something to say, right? Have, having some value to offer. Uh, and build your engagement process slowly, right? This wasn't an overnight thing for you too, right, Marilyn? You know, we don't want to focus on, hey, now Marilyn gets these amounts of likes, but at some point there was a there was a tipping point for you, but it required you to actually consistently post and consistently reach out. Just like with me, I didn't get to these, uh, you know, alignment with partners and, and, and podcast interviews right away. It took probably about four or five weeks for me to gain some traction on on being with the right people, following the right people, commenting on other people's posts, giving a value on other people's posts even. And then all of a sudden I started getting a lot more messages on my inbox, right? Um, would you, what, what would be your parting thought for people as they're starting out to not be discouraged right away by vanity metrics, but really be focusing on, on a better human meaningful connection with LinkedIn, Marilyn? I agree totally with you, Lydia, uh, that metrics are not the things to focus on. But why it's there, it's to it's, it's, it's there because the important posts or things that relate to this person has to be up there so that this person can read it, right? It's, it, that, that is why the metrics are there. One thing is not to focus on it, but the other thing is that could be a starting point first because that was what I did uh, to really get my posts sort of boosted up first. So I didn't focus on metrics at all. I didn't even focus on leads. But I know I need my posts to be read, right? People must read, read them. And at the start, when I was like posting for the first few times, I was discouraged. It's like nobody's reading. There were zero views. There were definitely no likes. And I'm sure it's not even anywhere in anybody's uh, feed, right? So that was also, that was also affecting my writing. Um, then I, I got in touch with Paul Higgins of Build, Live, Give. And he created this group. For, link, for LinkedIn people, uh, people who post on LinkedIn. And that's when we support each other with likes, mm. with comments. Yeah, and, and it's not only that, because he will kind of give us uh, tips, train us. And I mean, there's weekly training, you know, it's from, from him. It's, it's really good. Uh, and that's when we, 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 you know, it's like a commitment. It's like a team game where if you don't show up to do this, you don't show up to help them. You, you don't expect them to help you, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So with that, yeah, it kind of pushes you, right? Accountability kind of thing to, okay, I need to do this today. Yeah. So this is also one of the ways that got me going. And then also, yeah, also to kick in the, the, the metrics. But the yes. kicking of metrics is not for me to say, wow, I have so much, right? It's like also happy. That's it. it. It doesn't stop there. But it helped to boost it up to uh, the, the feet of people who need them the most. So when they read, they like it. It's because yeah, they like it. So they, they read it, they can relate to it. And then they will just keep reading my post and then we will connect kind of some sort. So I'm, I'm really happy that I'm helping them. And this group has been helping me to help them.
So it's yeah. more like this way, yeah. In this ca- in this case, yeah. That's a really good point. That I'll, and I'll add that add that in into uh, the LinkedIn uh, handy uh, guide as well. LinkedIn pods are a really good strategy uh, to start not only getting accountability to get out there and and have you know when other people are posting every day and every week. You do get a motivation, get motivation to do so as well, so right? And when you know right? that you know that you've got a private group of people that will support that your post when you post it, that again gives you a bit of courage to put yourself out there and, and, and feel that and feedback, feedback right away. You join a group with Paul Higgins. I'm also in a LinkedIn. Uh, I just started it actually last week, uh, which is called uh, Ladies Leveraging LinkedIn. It's specifically for women uh, business owners and, and, and startup founders. Uh, and and a huge part of what we do in there is actually share. We don't have a person that actually does training there. But what we do share is a generosity of a group that goes, hey, this is the stuff that's worked for me this week. Maybe you can try it. Uh, and and also a place where people can um, support each other with boosting the posts uh, and and micro posts right that we're doing on LinkedIn and so if, if and part of that could be find there are pods that you can find in LinkedIn itself uh, or you can uh, check out I can I and I can put in the um, the link for the leverage uh, ladies leveraging LinkedIn if you're a lady and in business uh, and then Marilyn maybe we can also um, feature Paul Higgins group as well. So a couple of starting points that you can find some pods to belong to that might be more specific to your niche or to your people. Uh, And then it's a great little cheerleading squad, right? To not only support you in using LinkedIn uh, effectively, but to help boost some of your posts that can help you, uh, you know, get a little bit more found on, on LinkedIn. Um, and maybe you can start your own pod, right? That's people that have done that before. So you are a creative, you're a web designer, you want to get other web designers on board. Um, you can start your own pod and just start with those people if you can't find your own. But I think that's a great, great tip in, um, you know, making sure that you're, you're, you're getting support in doing this as well. Yep, that's right. I mean, it's not like, um, the thing to focus on, as we have said, is but it's something to start. Start, and then your content has still has to be relevant to who you want to read this content. So it still has to be quality. It still has, has to be valuable. It's not like just you know any any kind of post that it's not meaningful at all. It has to have some meaning, definitely. Then this comes in really well. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Marilyn, for joining us today and and sharing your experience and behind the scenes. And again, these are, you know, these are um, things that are are working for both of us. And I hope that you got a takeaway. And if you did, uh, definitely share it underneath the comments of this video. One key takeaway that you think you can implement right away uh, for your for your own LinkedIn strategy. Uh, And know that, again, you can create what works for you. There is no you know, format a blueprint that you have to follow to the T. I think what's going to matter to you as a business owner is to try a strategy and do that and commit to one strategy and one key focus um, and do that often and more committedly rather than doing a hundred different things that you think you need to do to hack into LinkedIn. We, we have enough hacks out there. Uh, this is a very holistic approach, right? You can try more human strategies instead of trying to game the algorithm and things like that that might not be something easy to figure out right away uh, and just be genuine and authentic when when you connect with people on there and i think that's going to take you to way better results uh than than trying to learn the technical bits of linkedin so uh, i hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, and let us know if you do underneath the comments and thank you again marilyn for taking uh, uh time out of your busy day being a mom i hope your kids are not woken up just yet uh and they haven't ran into the room today which is good i know they do that uh, so I, I enjoyed this and, and I am really appreciative of you and your value you shared today. Most welcome. Thank you for having me. Thanks everyone. Thank you.